In a world that often celebrates success, happiness and achievement, it's all too easy to feel isolated when we are facing challenges or struggling with our mental and emotional well-being. Through sharing our struggles, we not only find solace for ourselves, but also extend a lifeline to others who might be going through similar experiences. So let's engage in open discussions, share our journeys, and let's remind ourselves that it's okay to not to be okay. Good evening, everyone. This is Aparna Mishra, founder of Women Shine, welcomes you all today. Women Shine has created a WhatsApp community where we would go on WhatsApp power chats and online sessions on Facebook. These sessions would be taken care by mental health experts who will discuss anxiety, depression, relationships, and other issues. On this World Mental Health Day, our first session is on parenting. Parenting is about guiding, not controlling. It's about nurturing, not pushing. It's about being there, not imposing. So let us discuss today with our expert the challenges and joys of raising the next generation. Please free, feel free to put in your questions in the comments box and we'll take, take them one by one. The guest today is Rohini Kesavan Rajiv. Welcome, Rohini. Hi, Aparna. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, Preeti. Rohini is, uh, Rohini is the Senior Behavioral Health Practitioner, Posh Compliance Consultant, Licensed mar Marital and 22 years of experience in mental health care. She is international award-winning social impact entrepreneur, speaker, and parenting coach. She's also a board, she's also the board of education member for social work, Bishop Heber College, and a member of the managing committee of MPA, which is India's first mental health NGO. She's the founder and clinical head of the Able Mind, based out of Bangalore. Welcome, Roini. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure and to be here. I, I also welcome Dr. Preeti, who's a moderator of the show, uh, chat show today. Preeti is a doctorate by profession and a writer by passion. She has worked as a UGC research associate, freelance proofreader, content writer, and content strategist. Her penchant towards writing has helped her achieve laurels in that field. She is also a well-published in both print and digital media. She has publications on national and international platforms. So I welcome Rohini and Preeti over here. Let's have a very good discussion on parenting in 2023. Over to you, Preeti. Thank you, Aparna. Thank you. Hi, Rohini. Welcome Hi, to Preeti. the show. It's wonderful to have you on this day. And uh, since you are a psychotherapist, one line, I think, so that people do not get confused. You know, let me tell people what a psychotherapist is. It's the art of finding an angel to give you hope in the times of terror, despair, and madness. And I think Rohini is doing that kind of a job. So it's over to you, Rohini. Rohini, um, like today's topic is about parenting, and you are a parenting coach. So what kind of issues do you face amongst the uh, children today uh, from you so that you can enlighten the parents and us about this? Sure. Thank you so much, Preeti. I think angel is a bit of an overkill, but thank you so much for that very generous introduction. Um, issues among children today, as we can see very much, uh, you know, is the increasing loneliness. I think for me, that is the biggest concern that I'm observing. Isolation amongst children is increasing tremendously these days. For example, even as, um, you know, recent as 20 years ago, you wouldn't see children struggling to sort of make friends or, you know, uh, hesitating to share what, you know, they're sort of feeling and worrying about whether they'll get judged. That wasn't as high as it is today. I think children these days um, are sort of becoming very um, social media savvy and they have a great social media persona. But when it comes to interpersonal interactions and communication with one another, being able to sort of you know, be, be themselves freely and openly, they're sort of struggling with that. That for me is the biggest challenge I'm facing as a mental health practitioner who works with adolescents uh, and children as young as 10 dealing with that. Yeah, that's a problem. Thank you. This is, yes, this is a area of concern. But uh, you, as you say, earlier also, people, 
the face and i think uh, the reason could be the nuclear setup which we are having today but uh, two decades back also there was this nuclear setup and i think we were also brought up in that setup yes and uh, teenage issues were prevalent then also but Absolutely. why is so much today i mean uh, a little more from you about this topic uh, why uh, children are facing this so much it couldn't be only social media presence could be other factors also Absolutely. So I think Preeti, from observation and being a parent myself, what um, I feel and with communicating, you know, the, the number of sessions I've had with the youngsters, 15, 16, 17 year olds, uh, there is a lot of perceived judgment that they feel. There's a lot of information overload. There's a lot that they are sort of having to deal with compared to what you and I had to deal with when we were young. Right our world wasn't as expanded and you know literally access was not as much as children have these days so it's they don't just have to worry about oh what is my parent thinking what is my teacher thinking and worst case grandparents and that's the max we would sort of stretch to in terms of an impression or you know how they sort of come across in terms whether they're communicating whether it's marks whether it's appearance, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, prizes or whatever. But right now, that's not what it is, Preeti. There are so many expectations from children from so many forums. Um, and I think as parents also, we tend to live vicariously through our children. Like we didn't get that. We didn't get that. Whether it's a degree outside of India, whether it's, you know, uh, coveted awards, whether it's a child that is exceptional in five different fields. Uh, I think somewhere there's a lot of pressure that we're also putting as a society, um, as parents on these young minds and they're just not sure how they deal with it. And if they complain about it, if they talk about it, will that make them less? Will they be seen as incompetent, right? I see a lot of children uh, whenever they come, adolescents come for counseling sessions, they are really open to talking to a therapist, which would not have happened when we were children. I mean, I don't even remember, you know, ever even knowing about mental health. Um, at the right. most, I knew there were psychiatric hospitals, uh, there were mental retard, um, uh, you know, children's homes, um, which was the word we used to use, right? Mentally retarded, which is not at all right. used right now, right? So. Apart from True. that, there was no counseling, there was no therapy, there was no help as such. You talk to your parents, you talk to your friends at the most, and you know, otherwise don't talk to anybody, read a book. Right now, children are open to speaking to a counselor, at least in metropolitan cities for sure. Um, but when they talk to the counselor, what I hear is, I wish I could talk to my mom. And I wish I could, you know, talk to my dad as freely as I'm able to talk to you. Because I feel I will disappoint them, you know, if I share what I'm actually thinking. Like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to take this course. I don't want to go abroad. I don't want to do these things. But I'm a brilliant student. So if I don't do this, will they be disappointed in me? You know, so that sense of responsibility, that sense of um, not really experiencing your childhood like you and I were lucky enough to experience. I think it's hitting them a lot these days. Absolutely correct. But uh, I just want to know, is it only peer pressure and parental pressure that uh, drives a uh, adolescent towards isolation? Or there are some other factors also which can create this sort of an issue amongst uh, these adolescents? Because, uh, you know, like you said, that they feel happier talking to a counselor and they find it very difficult. But I think some place this is becoming very weird because there is uh, earlier we had a fine line between parenting, the discipline and friendliness. But today the parents are going overboard to become very friendly with their child. And uh, they go down to lengths. I mean, they say we are very friendly. We can talk openly with our children. So how do you explain that? I want to know more about this. 
Okay, here I would really like to sort of emphasize one thing. While I understand the need for us to be friendly with our children, it's important. Um, that's a double-edged sword, if you ask me, right? What happens when you become overtly friendly with your child is that the sense of direction, support, guidance, and dependence that children need from their parents, they hesitate to ask them for it. Because now you're a friend, right? You talk to each other like friends. You talk about concerns, whatever, you know. There are a lot of parents who come and tell me this, oh, my, I'm, I'm friends with my child. Um, you know, it's, it's great to be approachable. It's great to be friendly, right? But when the child needs a parent, it's important for us to make sure that we are taking that role and we're taking that role seriously. Because as children grow up, they need to know, like from as young as, you know, infancy towards toddlerhood, towards, uh, you know, when you're 10 and 12 and 13, that when I'm upset and when I'm not okay, right, I can talk to my mom and dad about it. I can cry about it. And even if I don't have the solutions, they will help me find it, right? That's a parenting task, knowing that, Till I am ready to face the world on my own, I have two people I can fall back on. And sometimes what happens is when you become extremely friendly with a child and you discuss everything openly and stuff, including problems. Like, for example, I see a lot of parents sharing their problems with the child, with the exactly. friendship, you know, right. and friends, right? But what happens when they do that is that the child suddenly starts feeling helpless. And they come and discuss this. You know, I've spoken to so many children. It's 22 years since I've been in this field. And a common narrative across is that um, I love it that my mother shares so much with me, including her problems with my father. But they say, uh, ma'am, I don't know how to handle it. I don't know how to take care of my mother. And I don't know whether I'm OK to listen to her having problems with my father. And this is not even a divorced couple or anything I'm talking about. I'm talking about like a normal, so-called sane family, right? The child feels this friendliness has crossed a certain line where they feel the need to take responsibility. And that's not fair on the child, Preeti. Right. See, it's, you know, be very careful about how much you share with your child. Selective self-disclosure is important, you know, and at all times till the child is ready make sure that you help them understand that okay maybe things are not going well right now in our house maybe something is not great but you know what i'm in control and we will handle this right so for the child that sort of pressure is reduced so i think everybody's getting mixed up with this idea of modern day parenting and friendship and being True. able to reach out right i True. mean there are some very um for example, uh, you know, forgive me for mentioning this example, but I think it's important to discuss it. About six or seven years ago, I had a parent who brought a 14-year-old uh, to me, her son, who was addicted to pornography. And she was that mother who really wanted to support her child and uh, told me that, ma'am, I know everything about this. I know that, you know, he watches porn. He was 14, pretty, right? 14, he was, in, he was in eighth grade. And uh, there were repercussions of that particular uh, habit becoming an addiction. And she was dealing with those repercussions. But her whole reaction to it was like, I'm supportive, ma'am. I'm a supportive mother. So I said, when did you start observing that he's, you know, having, he's able to see these things? Where is the access coming from? What did you do when you initially found out? And she says that, I realized that he was doing this since he was 10. We noticed it once when he took one of our phones. And um, I read up and I felt like it was all right. You know, children are curious, boys are curious. And I thought, I want to be friendly with him. So I told him, hey, you can't watch these things in public. You can watch it in private. But, you know, without realizing what she did in her attempt to be friendly with her child, she went ahead and gave him permission to continue. And after that, it took her a while to sort of discuss it with her husband and then, you know, realize that maybe he's having other, you know, drastic side effects of this particular habit. Imagine a child at 10, Preeti, 
right? And four years into pornographic addiction. And the Still mother's good. explanation was, I wanted to be a friendly parent. I don't want my son to hesitate to talk to me about anything. But the line was not drawn, right? right. So we have to be very careful about what we're okay with and what we're not okay with. And guide the Absolutely. child accordingly, right? Right, absolutely. So, Rohini, do you feel, I mean, this whole responsibility lies just on the parents that the child today is facing so many issues or there are other factors also, I mean, parental uh, pressure is there or, uh, or there are some other factors which would, could be leading to isolation and such sort of problems in adolescents? There's never one particular reason for anything, Preeti. There, there's a small lag, I think. There's always a combination of factors. There is a social pressure. There is a, you know, a pressure at home. There is pressure from peers. There is pressure from, you know, schools. There are expectations right. that children have to navigate. There are distractions that are in front of them. Absolutely. Right? And when all these things come together and they are not able to sort of fall back on friends, you know, they don't know whether it's okay for them to communicate their needs appropriately. They don't know how to cope with the challenges that are in front of them. They don't know how to handle a no, right? They don't know how to handle something not happening to them the way they want it to happen. For example, if someone is used to, um, again, sorry to bring parents back in here, but used to parents catering to their every need, you know, either to Absolutely. overcompensate, or, you know, because they feel like, okay, they have to make sure that the child feels cared for because you're working all the time and, you know, you want to sort of compensate for the quality of uh, time that is lacking. Suddenly, the child comes into the real world at 18 and realizes, oh, my God, I don't have a car to go to my college. I don't have, you know, uh, all the facilities that he or she is used to suddenly. And they don't know how to deal with that, right? So then again, there is a whole new level of overcompensation that happens. Now, the other aspect also is what is it that you're showing your child? It's not just about what you talk to your child about. It's about, you know, how do you display your own, uh, you know, ways of affection? How hard are you working? What do you prioritize? How do you talk to your own parents? How do you deal with stress? These are the things that children are watching and learning. So if they feel that, oh, my father or mother don't really discuss problems in our house. We don't really talk about real things in my family or it's not OK in my family to cry about anything or complain about anything. That's what the child is going to take away, that there's something not right about that particular aspect. So I'd rather keep my problems to myself, right? Because talking about it means I'm getting judged because right. my parents don't talk about it. So right. if I talk about it, it makes them uncomfortable. So for, as parents, Preeti, I would really request everyone to notice how they respond to their child. And start right. young. Start mm. young. You know, 16 and 17 is too late. Start at 5, start at 4. When the child comes and tells you, I hurt my knee and... I fell and you know, the other child was beating me up. Don't tell the child that, you know, don't be such a sissy, you know, just get up and, you know, like deal with it, right? Don't cry, especially for boys. Sometimes I think it's a little lot harder for them. Right. What you need to tell them is, okay, how did you deal with it? You know, sit to their level and teach them, okay, you know what, are you hurt? Let's make sure that you're all right. Then let them talk about, okay, how they're feeling and then tell them, okay, you know what, this is not, you know, something you need to be worried about. It's all right. We'll figure this out, right? Let's get your wound cleaned up. Tell me about where it is hurting. So you are not overindulging them, but you're also not ignoring them with judgmental comments. Because you know what, if you do that, next time they're not going to come to you with a problem. Because they're just going to keep it to themselves saying, I don't think no. I can think about it. Yeah, maybe that is one thing that they get so suppressed that yes. they are unable to open up. This is one level I feel. That is one is the parenting. Yeah. When a child goes to the educational institutions, that is another one place 
where he or she faces a lot of issues over there. Uh, yeah. I mean, what you talk about like bullying or uh, body shaming, which is yeah. quite prevalent today. I think it yeah. was there earlier also. It was not that in our times, people did not do this body. But today, it seems it has become hyper. Like yeah. the shaming was there. If you are fat, somebody will tell you you are fat. You may feel bad, but you, you don't go to the length of committing a suicide or whatever. I, or you think bad about it. Because maybe an aunt, uncle or a neighbor might tell you such things. And then you are done. With one year you hear and the next year gone. But today, it goes to the heart. And uh, to a certain extent, the parents also become hyper about it. So since you are dealing with such cases, what can you tell us about this? You're absolutely right. Bullying was very prevalent when we were children as well. Right. I have been bullied nicely when I was a kid. I was extremely thin. Either you're extremely thin or you're extremely fat. You know, it's absolutely. not acceptable, right? So children, I mean, children, I mean, you can't help it. Yeah, they, they do comment and things like that. But I don't think children realize that they're hurting the other child. It's like, oh, he comments about something, two, three other kids laugh together and they feel like, oh my God, I'm getting popularity when I do something like this. So maybe it's okay for me to continue it. So they assume that that particular behavior is all right because it's giving you that sort of uh, power over the others, that sort of, uh, you know, leverage to shine literally, right? Now what happens is if the child is from a home that tells the child time and time again that, you know what? you're okay the way you are like don't don't let this bother you however make conscious choices if it worries you so much the way the child is going to react to it is probably going to be slightly better than a child who's coming from a place where the parent or the grandparent like you say or anybody has constantly reminded the child that the child is too thin or too fat or wearing glasses or too dark or you know those kind of comments about appearance right now when we were young these comments used to come it used to be very hurtful but we did not open a tablet or a website or a television or a instagram feed or whatever and see advertisements with you know people talking about beauty you know constant information overload about do this exercise to lose weight have this kind of food to lose weight, um, you know, do this to, you know, have better glowing skin, uh, bridal makeup at this particular level, you know, boys looking a certain way, girls looking a certain way. So even if you don't do that in your house, there is a lot of undercurrents about, you know, the way a person should look, which we do as right. a society, our advertisements, right. our food choices, every single thing. Oh, are you tall enough? Are you strong enough? Are you fit enough? Are you, you know, why do you have to be all these things? First, be okay enough with who you are, right? That's what we need to sort of instill in children. You will become tall when you're the right age. You will start putting on weight after a few years. You will start losing weight as you grow older and, you know, you start focusing on fitness and things like that. These are not critical things. It's who you are from the inside, who you are as a person. What do you do? How do you think? You know, those are the things that are important. But that's not how many advertisements are telling that, Preeti? How many oh, advertisements oh, talk oh, about um, kinder, uh, resilient? The advertisements talk about taller, stronger, smarter. Right? And fair. And fair okay. and lovely, yes. fair and lovely, because that is one uh, thing which I think Indians are obsessed. Because you should be fair. Any girl, uh, if she's a bit towards a dusky color, yeah, uh, there's something wrong with her. I mean, they, nobody considers dusky as a beauty, mm -hmm. but uh, from a young age, they start telling the child that look, you do this so that you'll become a bit more fair. And girls as young as seven and eight are getting obsessed with this sort of a thing. They're using cosmetics and whatnot just because they want to look beautiful. They want to... At that age, we did not even know what beauty was of that kind. We were just normal because yeah. I think parents did not pay attention 
to that much of thing. There was this undercurrent is too much today. Do you uh, blame only social media for this, or uh, a lot is on the parental and even the educational institutions? Where does this? Preeti, the kind of stigma that is associated with skin color or body yes. shape or any of those things, um, honestly, is a, is a hugely social concern. And we cannot run away from that fact, right? See, suppose there are, like if all of us as a society, you know, focus on what matters, focus on uh, brain fitness, focus on good health, focus on you know, um, regular self-care and compassion and looking out for one another. If those are the kind of things that we as a society start focusing on, in you know, things will start showing changes only then. But as a society, what are the things we're focusing on? We are focusing on IIT. We are focusing on beauty Absolutely. pageants. We are focusing on, you know, so even if the child or the parent tries, there is a social aspect that comes to it, right? They say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder, but beholder. if I'm yeah, but if I am made to feel that, you know, you are great, but the other person is much better um, because they are better looking. Uh, there, there are a lot of studies that says that you know better looking people uh, get higher salaries and get promoted faster, etc. For no fault of theirs. Okay, so it's not like oh, I'm good looking, so I'm getting promoted faster. But there is a bias. There is a selection bias. There is a bias that our society sort of portrays there. And we cannot deny that. That is that is definitely there. Yes, our matrimonial the ads, what do the matrimonial oh. ads talk about? <laughs> that is it, yeah. That is one problem. Actually, that is from time immemorial. You just can't pinpoint it that this is just done in the present day. Because yeah. uh, I think, I, as I told you earlier, we are... But it's still there. Under. Because that is the sad part. No? Yeah, beautiful, <laughs> lovely. Yeah. Maybe the boy may not be so beautiful or uh, handsome, I should say. But the girl has to be tall, beautiful. And another thing is people are uh, obsessed about convent educated. I mean, you should be talking in English. You should be smart. Now, is that the only criteria that a child should have to move in the society? Because earlier, okay, people were fat. We, we won't use the word fat. They, they used to be chubby. I used to say the ch child is chubby. But today, it has gone up till obesity. The word we are using today is the child has become obese. But today, you won't say that. Today you will say, oh, the child has become obese. You know, I talk to parents and some of them are obsessed with that. He, need, he or she needs to run. He or she needs to shed so much of weight. At a young age, when a child should be eating healthy, they become so overconscious about their diet. And what is a diet like? I mean, diet is not that, uh, okay, you can shed. They go on with getting wrong ideas from the net about yeah. intermittent fasting and whatnot mm -hmm. and that they will shed weight in no time instead yeah. of eating healthy they, but still that intermittent fasting can be there but they will be on junk food that's the best uh, answer to it i can you uh, you might be getting a lot of such cases so what do you say about that like uh, obsession is there about this figure and and mostly they want to look like those skinny models. Actually, Preeti, uh, you know, before I answer that question, I'd also like to say that while women, uh, you know, like matrimonial ads for women, for example, focus on beauty so much and like convent education and things, the pressure on men was also there in terms of how much money is he earning, where does, which college no. did he go to, right? So there, there is selective concerns for each gender, if you ask me. And, you know, that's unfortunately... Um, I'm hoping that as our children, you know, as they grow older, that changes, right? And I'm, I am seeing those changes as well when it comes to choosing a life partner. The currently 24, 25 to 30 year olds are looking at things beyond beauty, looking at things beyond a job, right? Which I think is uh, very encouraging. They're able to sort of think beyond the obvious and look beyond what they can see. 
but coming back to uh, your what what you said about obsession with beauty and you know um, what really yes does the that food happen a lot the food, yeah the food the diet. correct the food choices again you know it comes down to how we as a family are able to you know involve the child in the whole process of disciplining and self care right this is something i constantly tell when you know i'm taking workshops for parents of younger children as well that you know talk to them about the different food groups you know make nutrition and dietics a part of you know not just the chart in primary school you know the the plate which has dal and sabzi and you know the the that we learn that in second or third grade kind of thing but after that you don't learn anything right the choices and the way you start thinking about food starts changing when the child is 11 and 12 so it's during those times that you really need to bring back the focus on saying okay you know what carbo these are carbohydrates and this is how this kind of food is going to help you this is how pasta will help you this is how roti will help you and make the child think that right? allow them to figure out okay if i'm going to have excess junk food this is how low my energy is going to be and this is going to be the repercussion so you decide whether this is something you really want to ending junk food is not the answer it's not practical at all but 5 to 6 days a week can you encourage them and participate with them to give them the right kind of healthy food and not force it down their throat children these days are not like us preeti for us whatever Absolutely. our parents cooked and kept in front of us we had to eat that we had to eat we yeah, had nowadays to. children ask oh what's for dinner what's for lunch you know they want a choice so they're spoiled for choices they're spoiled Absolutely. for choices but you can turn that around preeti it's not such a bad thing you know no you, you can turn choice, them around correct give them a Nein, choice but... that tells you actually i'll tell you th- what i have seen the way you pro- spoke at that time that the parents are becoming friendly so becoming friendly they have changed their food habits to and gone down to the children's food habits you know they they are uh, have junk food that's it they themselves are keen to have that junk food so how do you ask a kid to change That, that's, that's true. A, that's true. What? If I am sitting at home and watching TV all the time, and I tell my child go out for a run, become physically fit, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's never going to happen because uh, the moms today are also couch potatoes. They also love watching their cereals. Maybe they are munching, crunching, <laughs> and they they expect the child. Uh, you go out. You take an exercise or whatever you want to do, and don't eat this junk because they themselves are uh, <laughs> binging on that sort of a thing. So, any sort of a thing, would you like to tell our viewers and our parents particularly how they can manage these things? Okay, you said like five days a week, it's normal food, and then maybe a day, a cheat day. So, how can we change the mindset of our child? the parent has to be ah oh, not food. about food but yeah, everything food is just one aspect of it right everything um you know is they learn a lot from what we do and how we deal with situations and how we make choices a lot more than uh what they hear from us or the books they read or what or what is taught in school a lot of it is observation about how parents respond to things so if yeah, as a mother yeah if as a mother i am telling oh i don't want to go for a run i'm too tired right but i want you to go because i want you to take care of yourself the child is like okay is this what adult looks like right and the child is like okay not really looking forward to this sort of uh, adult's life where you're constantly stressed out you can't take care of yourself you are not prioritizing yourself and the child feels that that's okay to do if my mother doesn't feel the need to prioritize herself my father doesn't feel the need to get some exercise or take a break maybe this is the okay right this is the way life works so we are teaching them that 
when you grow up, this is how it's going to look like. You're going to be working all the time. You can't take a break. You don't step out. You have no time for anything. So the child is like, okay, maybe I'd like to remain in this childhood state for a little longer. And I don't want to go because you're not going anyway. You know, this is something my younger son has taught me. You know, he, like if I tell him, okay, you know, put your iPad down. Um, he just looks at me for a couple of minutes and then he says, okay, I'm waiting. So I asked him, what are you waiting for? And he said, uh, aren't you checking your phone, Amma? Right? So yeah, then, this is... <laughs> We all face this. We all mm -hmm. face this because because we also, I think, now uh, obsessed with it. What? No, I have things tried. like wearing a seat belt. You know, anything. Right? Yeah, anything. You they can't you enforce out. it. No, you can't no. enforce. Even in the educational institutions, our teachers told us that you have to follow these rules. Or the uh, education uh, people said yeah. that this is the way the discipline is. I mean, they rebel for smallest things. Maybe the prayer, maybe small little things. They will not do it. They do not want to respect. Our teachers would come. Where any nth times they would come, they would stand up just to wish them. But yeah. is that the same today? No. They do not want to do that uh, because they find it a waste of time. They feel, how many times are we going to get up and do this? No, now, Preeti, the point is that that's something we have actually opened out to, you know, I think schools, the concept that respect should be earned. It shouldn't be forced into something, which I think right. is a good thing. But also, it's a, you know, it can go both ways. <laughs> so... Okay, hi uh, Roini hi again. Yeah, we have one very good question from Shraddha Savant Desai. She wants to know that when should we press the switch button from friend to parent and vice versa? How can that moment be identified? I think this is a very important question and relevant to parents of today. You know, Absolutely. it's something yeah. very important. So really, yeah. we need to know the answer of this. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, there is no such uh, switch that is possible, first of all. However, uh, what I would urge you to do is that, you know, I, I, if you can share the age of your child, that would be great. But the point also is that be involved in your child's life. Know your child's friends. Know your child's interests. You know, be a part of those interests right from a very young age. Right? So when you start getting involved as a parent without getting becoming a helicopter parent, of course, you know, giving them sufficient independence to take small, small decisions, giving them tasks that they can do on their own, you know when something is not okay with them. Which means you understand that, okay, you know what, something is bothering my child because I'm seeing or noticing changes in his or her behavior. I'm noticing his or her uh, reactions to things that did not bring the same reaction earlier. And when that happens, that's when the switch should happen. Because now you know that as a parent, you need to take over. You need to tell them, hey, you know what? I'm seeing something is bothering you. You're not, you're, you're jumpy, you're getting irritated. You know, you're not letting me come close. What's happening, right? Yeah. If there is something that's bothering you, let's talk about it. I, if I can help you with it, I will. So the point is you can't do that if you really are not involved in your child's life in the first place. See, our job as a parent is not just to provide for them. It is to protect them, right? Yeah. It is to, to preserve them. them. See, you know, guide me, them, control yes, them. I think parenting is the three Ps to protect, to preserve and to provide. You cannot mm -hmm. just Absolutely. focus on one. You know, if you start yes. focusing on the other two at an early age, the switch becomes a lot easier. Very right? true, very true. So like, yeah, we have one more comment from Shashi Thakur. She says, as parents, we need to be mindful of how we deal with our children. Our choice of words, tones of tone of voice and overall demeanor, neither imposing nor over-friendly. I think it's very absolutely. important. Thing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's bang on. Tone of voice and choice of words is really important. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, uh, so thank you so much, Roini, for a wonderful session. And yeah, one more thing. Okay, so Shraddha is saying thanks to you. Her daughter is 10 years old and she'll keep this in mind. <laughs> <Thanks> <laughs> oh, absolutely. 
um, I, I have two kids as well. One is 10 and one is 14. So, yeah, I think okay. the 10 year olds are a lot more vocal than yeah, the current teenagers, right. right? They will right. call you out if you're not doing the right job. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you so much for your time, Roini. It was a nice, nice discussion pleasure. on how we can understand and support our child. So this Thank is uh, Parenting 2023. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you to reach out anytime. Yeah, yeah, of course. Share and your details. And people all out. across have asked the same question from everywhere, from all over the country. The same question, how to handle teenagers with social media distractions. This is what I have got a lot of questions. And uh, I think we'll try in the next session that we can handle and ask uh, you how we can go about this, how to give a break to social media. Because most parents have got this issue that the children have become violent. And because of COVID and this online and the gadget uh, association, uh, things have gone out of hand. So yeah. how things can be managed, that is the biggest issue. They are uh, cranky, they are having tantrums and yeah. have become violent. So I think yeah. next session, we will, we will join again. And till then, we can uh, wait for you. I'm also, for yeah, I'm sharing your uh, website also on the link. So yes, that please. people can reach out to you and yes, take your you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Very I'm happy to take questions anytime. Yeah. Yeah, theablemind.com. Thank you yeah. both, Aparna and Preeti. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Preeti. So okay, bye. Bye.